Welcome to 3M's presentation on the ABCDs of fall protection. This presentation is based on current United States federal requirements. Always consult user instructions and follow local laws and regulations. 3M owns all rights in this presentation and digital recordings or other reproduction is strictly prohibited without permission. In this presentation, we will talk about anchors, body support, connectors, and the need for descent and rescue. Some of the key definitions that are important to understand for those engaged in fall protection activities are authorized persons. Authorized persons are persons approved or assigned by the employer to perform a specific type of duty. A competent person is one who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards, and most importantly, one who has authorization to take prompt and corrective measures to eliminate them. A qualified person is one who by possession of a recognized degree, certificate, or professional standing, or who by extensive knowledge, training, and experience has demonstrated his or her ability to resolve problems relating to the subject matter, work, or task. When working at heights, all workers must have two lines of defense against the fall. The first line of defense is their primary form of fall protection, which is the worker's main support system, typically it's their hands and their feet, or their sense of balance. The second would be a backup in case their primary fails and is some form of fall protection such as guardrails, fall restraint, or fall arrest. When doing your job hazard analysis, you should follow the hierarchy of fall protection. Number one, you should try to elim eliminate the hazard. This may be done by engineering out the hazard or modifying work procedures. Some examples are relocating an electrical panel box to a more accessible location using a pole or an adapter to change a light bulb, installing a chain on an overhead valve. Number two, you should try and deny access. These are solutions that keep individuals from accessing the hazard. Examples are guardrail systems, which are barriers installed to prevent personnel from falling to lower levels. Where suitable, they protect the greater number of employees with little or no training needed. Thirdly, fall arrest. This is the last resort. This requires the greatest amount of training and responsibility. This means that the worker must wear equipment that allows for a connection between the worker's harness and an anchor point that is designed to stop a fall and minimize injury after it has begun. Proper training and diligent communication is important. And lastly, administrative controls. These are work practices and procedures designed to warn a worker before he or she approaches a fall hazard. It is the least efficient means of fall protection. Here you can see some examples of engineering out the hazard. On the left is the pole with the adapter to change a light bulb. On the right is a chain on a valve. These are examples of denying access. Guardrail systems prevent the worker from accessing the hazard and fall restraint limit the fall distances because they can't reach the edge. Fall arrest is the last resort. It is a system that allows a worker to fall and is designed to reduce the impact forces placed on the worker's body. To remember the main components of an active fall arrest system, just remember A, B, C. A is anchorage. A secure point of attachment, anchorage connectors will vary. Body support means it's a harness that's designed to distribute the forces across the body to provide a connection point on the worker for personal fall arrest systems. C, connectors. Connectors are lanyards or self-retracting devices that connect a worker's harness to the anchorage. The ABCs are part of a complete fall arrest system. You can't have one without the other. The core of your fall arrest systems are your ABCs, but don't forget about D, descent and rescue. Descent and rescue is a key component of your fall arrest system as well. A rescue plan must be in place that ensures prompt rescue or that an employee can self-rescue. Keep in mind that dialing 911 is not part of a rescue plan. Fall arrest equipment that has been exposed to a fall arrest or fails an inspection must be removed from service immediately. Some equipment, such as self-retracting devices, may be sent back to the manufacturer where they are repaired and can be put back into service. 
The anchor refers to the structure, wood, steel, or concrete. The anchorage connector is the adapter or the device used to attach to the structure. All anchorages must provide a secure point of attachment for a complete personal fall arrest system. They must be capable of supporting a load of 5,000 pounds or of meeting OSHA's criteria of a two to one safety factor. The question to ask is, will it hold the weight of my three quarter ton pickup truck? If you don't think it will, then don't tie off to it. Your choice of anchor depends on the type of work being done. They can be fixed or mobile, permanent or portable. There are two types of anchor points, non-certified and certified. Non-certified or improvised anchors are off-the-shelf solutions that are attached to structures using a person's best guess. They must be rated for 5,000 pounds, and you should ask yourself, will it hold the weight of my full-size pickup truck, usually a three-quarter ton? If you're not sure, then don't tie off to it. In order for anchors to be certified, it must be designed and installed by an engineer and maintain a two-to-one safety factor. Keep a list that identifies where certified anchors are located and identify them to be used only for fall arrest. In other words, not for lifting. And you should document frequent inspections. These are some of the many examples of 3M anchorage connectors. It is crucial that you choose the correct anchorage connector for the correct application. Full body harnesses originated from mountaineering sit style harnesses, which provided a more suitable distribution of the impact forces on the body compared to a waist belt. Their design moved the impact forces from internal organs around the waist to major bone and muscle groups around the pelvic girdle. Harnesses are advantageous over body belts because they better distribute the forces, they allow for prolonged tolerance of suspension, they decrease serious injury potential, they put the worker in an upright position, and it makes it easier for rescue. Keep in mind that OSHA 1926.502 states that personal fall arrest systems shall limit the maximum resting force on an employee to 1,800 pounds when used with a full body harness. Harnesses should be inspected prior to each use and at least once a year have a documented inspection by a competent person. You should check the four key components of a harness, labels. Labels should be present and fully legible. Check the hardware, make sure that it is free from rust, pitting or corrosion. Make sure that the plastic components are not damaged, broken or distorted. Check the webbing, check for frays, cuts, tears, burns, abrasions, paint or contaminants that conceal the fibers. Check the stitching. There should be no broken, loose or missing stitches. Harnesses can be cleaned with mild soap and water and then air dried. Harnesses have a working weight capacity of 130 pounds to 310 pounds. DBI Sala and Protecta harnesses are tested to 420 pounds. At a minimum, a harness must have a dorsal D-ring for fall arrest, normally referred to as the back D-ring. All other D-ring configurations are optional and dependent on the work to be done. Connectors are the devices that you use to attach yourself to your anchor point. And when used for fall arrest, your connecting system must have a way of absorbing energy. Examples are lanyards, hooks, carabiners, and self-retractors. When used for fall arrest, lanyards must have a means of absorbing energy limiting the forces on the body. Additionally, they need to reduce the forces to less than 1,800 pounds according to OSHA and 900 pounds according to ANSI. There are many different styles of lanyards, and the most common is a single leg with an external shock pack. The twin leg with an in internal shock pack or stretch style is common in many different types of industries. The benefit is no bulky shock pack, and the stretch feature keeps excess webbing from getting in the way of the worker. Some lanyards are designed to tie back onto themselves. They have a more robust design that uses abrasion resistant webbing and hooks with 5,000 pound rated gates. Just like your harnesses, lanyards should be inspected prior to each use and at least once a year have a documented inspection by a competent person. 
Check the webbing for cuts, rips, tears, or frays. Look for UV damage. This is where the webbing has changed color, gotten stiff, brittle, or brown. Check the stitch patterns. Make sure that there's no broken, loose, or missing stitches. Check the shock packs. Labels should be there, and they should be fully legible. Spend some time on the snap hooks. The best way to test them is to open them up and let them close as slowly as possible. Check to make sure that the hook meets the current ANSI 3600 pound gate strength requirement. You should see this stamped on the gate, and the gate rating should be in pounds. If you take one thing away from this presentation, here it is. Note, fall clearance is always changing depending on the different fall arrest equipment being used. With a lanyard, fall clearance is always calculated from the height of your anchor. In this example, the total freefall distance is 6 feet. The deceleration distance is 4 feet. We take in, into account the worker's height, accounting for harness stretch, that is 6 feet, and we give it a 1.5 foot safety factor. This gives us a total clearance requirement of 17 and a half feet. Again, this is measured from the anchor point. So what do we do when we don't have a 17 and a half feet of clearance? Well, you can raise your anchor point. Remember, it is 17 and a half feet from your anchor point, not necessarily your walking surface. Get a shorter lanyard. Six foot lanyards are the most common, but there are shorter lanyards on the market today. Or maybe the lanyard is the wrong tool for the job. Perhaps a self-retracting lifeline would be a better solution. In many instances, self-retracting devices are advantageous over lanyards. They require shorter fall distances, most are recertifiable, and they engage once a fall has begun. Just like your harnesses and lanyards, self-retracting lifelines need to be inspected prior to use. Check the housing to ensure that it, it's not cracked or broken. Check the cable or web for broken strands or fibers. Check the hooks, make sure that there is no rust, pitting, or corrosion. Check the impact indicators, make sure that it has not been deployed. Always use a tagline instead of leaving the cable or web extended for long periods of time. This will protect the cable and it reduces the possibility of damaging the coil spring. OSHA states that the employer shall provide prompt rescue or shall assure that employees are able to self-rescue themselves. ANSI states that employees shall develop and maintain a written rescue procedure for every location where an active fall protection system is being used. This means that you should have a rescue plan and that you should practice that plan to rescue. What is prompt rescue? Well, it means that it must take place within six minutes, but every rescue situation is dependent on location and environment. Why is prompt rescue important? Well, there may be injury. 1910.151 suggests that medical aid um, should be rendered within four to 15 minutes. If it's potentially life-threatening, then four minutes. OSHA does not state a time frame. Suspension trauma is considered life-threatening. When providing rescue, keep it simple, safe, and planned. Here are some characteristics of a good rescue system. You never want to cut a line, never improvise. Again, keep it simple. Document any update as the situation changes. Be prepared. Remember, you should never put yourself in a scenario where you as a rescuer can become the rescuee. Thank you for attending this presentation. For further information, please visit us at www.3m.com forward slash fall protection. Thank you and have a safe day.